Okay, so extensible full mode is a, a uh, combination of the GNSS receiver, the IMU for tilt compensation, and the LiDAR sensor that's in the smart handle. So by inserting the smart handle, we've added LiDAR as a capability. And what that is gonna do is measure distances and angles from my GPS receiver. So extensible pull mode is, a, is kind of a directional mode. So I've got a green laser light that's flashing right underneath me wherever I'm pointing this. And while it's in this mode, it's not gonna be outputting a GPS position. Um, it's not gonna do that until I press and hold the trigger that's just underneath the, the handle here. So as soon as I press and hold the trigger, that green laser light goes solid. And wherever I point that laser, it's going to report my GPS position to that point into field maps or whatever mapping application that you want to use. So let's look at that in field maps. Okay, so field maps is saying connecting to device because while I'm not pressing the trigger, it's not outputting GPS position. Um, if I press and hold it, it goes solid and field maps gets our position, shows our accuracy at the top there, 0.4 centimeters. And wherever I point that green laser is where my position goes in field maps. So I'm standing right in the middle of this parking spot and aiming that laser at the end of that parking lot line. See that there? Aim it at the other one without moving. Aim it at that one. Wherever I'm pointing this, field maps is getting my, my position at that point. Let's capture a couple of features. So first, a point feature. Um, the way that we control when field maps captures the point using this new technology is by enabling GPS averaging. So I've I've averaging set to two points, and you can see there once I started collecting a feature, it's it's kind of stuck in the state of averaging zero of two. You can see at the top, and that's. You know, what it's doing is it's waiting for a valid G, GGA position to come through. So as soon as I press and hold the trigger and we get valid GPS data, it's going to average those two points and, and collect the feature. So if I want to do that again, I can click start averaging. I can go to the end of this line, point at it, pull the trigger, and gets my position. And I can save that. The other way we can use this is by doing uh, a line. And so if we do a new line feature, we could do GPS averaging, collect each vertex individually, or we can use streaming mode. So if I stop averaging, hit three dots and start streaming, now I can draw, say this curve. So I'm gonna, Without pulling the trigger, I'm going to aim the laser at the curb, my starting point. I'm going to press and hold the trigger. I'm going to go solid. And I'm just going to basically draw this curb directly into field maps using this, this laser. So this is combining you know, RTK positioning with that IMU tilt sensor to accommodate for tilt, and then the LiDAR sensor for distance measurements from my receiver down to the curb. So just by holding the trigger, walking along this curb and pointing at the laser at the top, I'm essentially drawing this curb right into the mat. Hit submit. And you can see our new curb line that falls pretty much directly on top of the, the other lines that I've captured. Another use case for this is finding features. So finding an existing feature in field maps um, using the extensible pull mode, we can just select a feature, do that one, and let's do the compass. And so, you know, imagine if this grass was, you know, five feet tall or is covered with snow um, or it was otherwise, you know, inhabitable or uh, 
and not easy to look through. I could put field maps into compass mode. I could stand here and using that laser, I can kind of point it around until I have a decent idea where my feature's at. Okay, I see where I'm pointing it. I can stop it, walk over there, get a closer look. And there we go. It's this corner piece of this uh, um, landscaping design here. So let's make it uh, really efficient to find features and um, you know, maybe to look in dangerous places. Maybe there's a backyard with, uh, with a, a valve behind a fence or something like that where you can just point the laser over that fence into the area and, and locate that, that feature. Invisible pull mode is a little bit different. Um, it actually works a little bit more like a traditional GPS receiver in that it uh, just continuously outputs a new position uh, once a second. Um, but the difference is it's not a directional or it's not, you don't point it. Um, it is using the LiDAR sensor at the bottom of the receiver to dynamically calculate the antenna height, which is the distance between bottom of the receiver to the ground uh, each second. And so anywhere I hold this receiver, either up or down, side to side, it's gonna be recalculating that antenna height so that my elevations remain precise and accurate as I move around. Now this mode can be useful for lots of different types of data collection, um, you know, streaming lines, streaming polygons, you know, walking a, a curb kind of area or doing um, topography surveys, uh, many other, other uses uh, that this is beneficial for. So we're gonna look at how to get it set up, you know, put it into the invisible pull mode and how to use it in a couple of different applications. Um, so we're gonna look at field maps and we're gonna actually collect some lines and, and points in real time. So first thing um, is getting into the correct mode and ready to collect data. So I've got the smart handle inserted into the Scotty Gold and I've got EOS Tools Pro running on my phone and I've got an RTK fixed position. Um, so that's kind of our baseline. Any of these smart handle modes need to have our RTK fixed position. So you connect to your local base station and wait for the status in the upper left there to say fixed. Uh, next, we need to put the smart handle into the correct mode. So if you look in the upper right of EOS Tools Pro, it says smart handle disabled. That's the default mode when you insert the, the smart handle into the Scotty. There's two ways to cycle through the, the modes. You can either tap on that icon there and turn on the smart extensible handle there. Extensible pull mode. It's gonna go into extensible pull mode by default. Um, and then you can switch it using these tabs. Invisible pull mode. To go from extensible to invisible. And you get uh, an audio um, kind of reading of when it switches those modes. Um, so that when you do it this other way, which is through the trigger, that you, um, you know which mode it's in when it switches. So let's turn it off in the app. GNSS mode. Go back and keep your eye on the, the smart handle disabled icon there. I'm gonna tap the trigger three times. Extensible pull mode. And that's gonna do the same thing as if we went into here and, and toggled it on. You can see it toggled on now. So I do it again, tap it three times. Invisible pull mode. It's gonna go to invisible pull mode. And if I do it three more times. Extensible pull mode. It goes back. So now once the smart handle is turned on, uh, every time you tap that trigger three times, it's going to just toggle between those two modes, extensible and, and invisible. Uh, so we're looking at invisible pull mode invisible for this video. Mode. So I'm going to switch it to invisible and then go back. In the upper right now, it says smart handle invisible and it's green, meaning it's initialized. Uh, if it's red and says uh, initiate motion, that means that the tilt sensor is not calibrated yet. And so you need to move just the Scotty around a little bit while you have an RTK fixed position. And usually just a bit of motion will get it initialized and it will turn green and um, you know let you know that you're ready to collect data. Now in invisible pull mode, you're not gonna see the green laser like you're used to with the extensible pull mode. Um, and that's because it's not a, a directional kind of measurement. Um, no matter what orientation I'm holding the Scotty Gold in, it's using the LiDAR sensor to measure directly to the ground in the line of gravity. So it doesn't matter where I'm you know, pointing this or orienting it, it's going to get positioned down to the, the ground just below me. And so as I move it around, um, you know, if we go into the map view here, you'll see that 
wherever I go, it's going to follow where the Scotty Gold is at directly down to the ground. So let's look at this in field maps. In field maps, this is going to operate a lot like a, a regular kind of GNSS receiver without um, tilt compensation or anything. It's just going to be spitting out a new position once a second. And so after you've got the, the Scotty selected in your location provider, like I've done here, it says connected, and you can open your map, look at the blue dot, and that blue dot is going to follow wherever you go. So let's go to the end of this parking lot line. And I'm not collecting any data yet. This is just real time positioning, but I'm kind of hovering over this parking lot line and you can see on the map, it's, it's right at the end. If I go to the other side, it's going to follow me. And now we're hovering over the other side. Um, elevation, if I open up the GPS details and we look at our altitude to 48 meters, as I move this, it's going to remain approximately the same, right? It's varying a little bit, of course, but if I were not in invisible pole mode, if I was just in GNSS mode, that would be moving a lot more. So it maintains that elevation at the, the surface of the ground, even as I move it up and down. So let's, let's collect some data here in field maps. So if we go over and start at the beginning of this line, and just hold it over it. Remember, it doesn't matter how high or low you're holding it. Just hold it in a way where it can get good GPS signal. Uh, hit the plus sign. Let's do a line. And let's start streaming. And so now as I move, you can see it dropping points. And the elevations of those, again, are gonna be tied to the surface of the earth, or the ground below you, um, even if I vary that height of the, the gold where I'm holding it throughout that data collection process. Uh, so that's a line that's streaming. We could also collect a point or collect a line, uh, you know, vertex by vertex. So if I hit the plus sign, we hit the point. This is gonna be just like a normal GPS data collection, right? You just hover the Scotty Gold over your, your asset, whether it be the curb or maybe this, this crack that I wanna capture. I hold it there. I hit start averaging and I wait for it to finish. Now with the invisible pull mode, you don't need averaging turned on. Um, that, that, you know, some people prefer to do that. Um, and the extensible pull mode we do can suggest people use averaging just because the workflow is smoother. But invisible pull mode, you don't have to. So you can turn on, turn off averaging. We go back to the settings here. Collection settings, averaging off. Then I go back in here, hit the plus sign, new point, just gonna grab a point like it normally does when um, GPS averaging is turned off. And if I was in the wrong spot at the time, I can move, hit update point, and it'll move it just to wherever that Scotty is at at that moment. Again, with the elevation being compensated down to the, the ground.